Hi, this is Mimi Schmidt, and welcome to the Roundtable podcast at The Land Geek. Um, I'm here today with three great guys, Eric Peterson, the technician. How are you doing today, Eric? I'm great. Good to be here. Yeah, uh, it's nice to see you. And Mike Zeno, how are you today? Doing wonderful. How are you, Mimi? Great. In your new office, it looks spiffy. It looks very nice. Almost in a new office. This is a transition period here, but... It looks okay. <laughs> <laughs> and hi, Scott. How are you today? Love the new beard coming in. Thank you. Yes, I'm uh, warming up for Wisconsin winter. It's coming. So it's, it is coming. I think like the solstice was what yesterday, something yep. like that. It is officially fall now. Not so here in Tennessee. Fall. Doesn't feel that way here. It was 90 yesterday here, but now it's. I think that was our last day. You guys. We've had weeks in the 90s. It's been warmer than it was all summer. It's been crazy. Yeah, it's been it's, we've got a beautiful here. September here in the in the 80s mostly. So you call that Indian summer nice. when it's hot like that? Indian summer. Indian summer, yeah. Oh my gosh. So please have patience with me today, guys. This is the first time that I'm doing the podcast, but uh, phenomenal our job. Our topic today is worst advice. What is this, some of the worst advice that we have either gotten from from um, fellow folks that are in the land geek business with us or on some of the other platforms like Facebook. Um, so that's what we're gonna get started with, okay? All so right. let's go around the same order. So Eric, what is some of the worst advice that you have gotten? I think one that, that kind of speaks to me is just this idea of you need a website to sell land or you need a website to get your business started or, um, anything along those lines. I mean, the reality is I have coached many students that, uh, that never started with a website, didn't have a website, probably their entire coaching period and still sold lots and lots of land. Now, um, you know, I will admit that I'm a bad example because my background being in graphic design, for me, it was super important to have a website from the beginning. And I'd I did invest time in that. It wasn't the very first thing I did, but it was certainly early on. Um, I spent a lot of time developing that and getting it, you know, just the way I wanted it. But um, in doing that, I also learned that, you know, the reality is it's, it's not um, the best marketing tool you have. The, the platforms that we talk about for selling land like Craigslist and Facebook and Landmoto and the other land selling websites are far better places to be out there marketing your property than on your own website. I agree with that. And I also think even when you get a, do get a website, don't go down a rabbit hole of hiring someone and spending a lot of money and effort expended into developing a website. A lot of platforms out there that are 40 bucks a month, right? That you can pay that are super easy to use and, I see a lot of folks get caught up in building websites too once they start that and I think it's uh not the best use of their time. Absolutely. It's a it's a big place to to waste a lot of time without a lot of results on the uh income side. So yeah, I agree. How about you, Mike? What's some of the worst advice you've seen out there? I, you know, I'm thinking it's the advice some people silently give themselves, this whole idea of proof of concept. Like, I, I'm, I want to get involved in land investing, and, you know, I'd like to learn from someone, say, like Scott Todd in flight school or something like that, who's very successful. But before I do that, I want to have proof of concept. I want to know this work. So the danger, I think, in that is, is that... Uh, you know, if people start making a mistake from the beginning, maybe with their mailing or maybe with their pricing, then the results are lackluster, which will create less um, action that they'll take in terms of executing more mailings. And then so slowly what happens is this whole thing just kind of slowly swirls downward to the point where they're not doing anything. And then they're off, like Mark always says, to ATM investing or something. So I believe if that this is something that I always <clears throat> tell people that first and foremost, you hear about us, you hear about the land investing and you're like, wow, is that even real, right? Is that like, does this really exist? This idea of buying 25 cents on the dollar and, and then selling it for massive profit. Well, then there's a ton of 
you know, there's, a, there's an overabundance of proof out there. Then you say, okay, well, who are these people, these Langi people? And now you got to know, like, and trust us, right? So you kind of, there's a, we've been around for a long time. There's a, there's a lot of proof of concept for what we do. We're just average people that follow the same business model. So if those two are aligned, right, and, it's, and the business speaks to you, it's like, okay, how am I going to learn? And then so then it comes down to what am I going to do? And I think that, you know, we have this recipe in place, this flight school that works. But then people say, well, I'm going to be just a little, I'm going to hedge my bets. I'm going to try it on my own first and see if I get proof of concept. And this proof of concept is a dangerous thing because if you're left to your own devices, your action may not be consistent. You may make common mistakes that we've all made, and that's going to cause you to take less actionable steps and it's going to just spiral downward. So um, there are some people out there that have that massive entrepreneurial type mentality and spirit and they can actually, but most people really would benefit from some sort of uh, guided action like flight school. So um, I think that uh, my, I would say the worst advice is the advice that a lot of people give to themselves is I like this, but I want proof of concept first. That one really strikes me because I think it's not only that advice you give yourself about proof of concept um, that you need to see if you can do it. That's all the advice, just the self-confidence that uh, sometimes, you know, I see other people can do it, but can I do it myself? Right. right. That advice that I'm giving myself that, that, um, and I completely agree. How many people that have we seen that have started that way and never gone anywhere? Right. 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 It's unfortunate. I always tell people, sure, do it. Try it yourself like that and give yourself a date, right? Go 60 days and see how far you get. And then right. think about where you could have been, you know, had you gotten some help otherwise, right? I think the definite timeline like that is very helpful. Say, okay, I'm going to give, if you're going to do it on your own, give yourself like, uh, you know, a month, two months, three months, give yourself a hard deadline, uh, judge your progress and then say, okay, well, maybe I should get some help. You know, maybe you're doing well, but that's a great idea. Yeah, because I did that. I did the same thing, right? I went to boot camp at the end of April. By June, I'd signed up for coaching because after two months, I hadn't gotten to where I would have liked to have, right? Mm, yeah, that's a good one. How about you, Scott? What's some of the worst advice you've seen or gotten? Uh, trying to think back to, to my time starting up. I don't know if I got a lot of uh, bad advice starting up. Um, I got some good advice, and that was to, you know, uh, going to coaching because Mark knows what he's talking about. But it seems like the longer we're in this now and, and that there are more and more people doing this, uh, it seems like these little things are popping up here and there that that kind of go against the land geek model of things that make me cringe a little bit. Back to the website thing, I've seen over and over that people need a land buying website. And to me, it just makes absolutely no sense whatsoever uh, when I can monitor uh, things on the buy side with my telephone and, and uh, an intake manager or whatnot. Um, it just seems like that, that would definitely be a, a waste of resources getting started. Uh, the other thing is, you know, I see some advice on mailings recently that uh, in order to find a good area, you need to mail there first and you need to mail in large volumes and figure out over time uh, what the, you know, look at the stats over time and see what deals you're getting out of that. And that, that really goes against our model too, because what do we teach people in flight school? We teach people start out with 20 a day and stagger your mailings and split test your mailings, split test your prices in different areas and that type of thing. And then as you start to get responses back, uh, you can fine tune your offer. You can fine tune your knowledge in a particular area. And you don't need to send out thousands and thousands of mailers to find the right area. You can, you can do very well with your county research. I would recommend spending hours and hours and hours on county research before you even send out any mailings. And then when you start sending out mailings, do them in a very deliberate uh, fashion where you're, you're kind of testing the market with those mailings. So it's just kind of things here and there that are, that are, that are popping up and, um, you know, I, I think when it comes to uh, the land geek model, you know, we have overwhelming evidence that this work as works as Mark says all the time. So if anybody has questions about, you know, the market, uh, our equation, how this works, you know, just get in touch. We can we can put you in touch with a lot of people, uh, excluding ourselves, who are doing really well uh, in land investing. Completely agree. I see so many coaching students that are buying land too high because they're not doing enough county research. 
right? Which um, puts them in a bad spot in their business and then also drives up prices for the rest of us in the areas, right? So I see that. And then additionally, the way we teach the model is, is that, right, learn short, right? Uh, like you were just saying, Scott, in that track your response rate. If you're getting a 5% response rate and you're able to buy one, 1%, one for every hundred, that your pricing is good and adjust otherwise. So I think you're completely right. And you can learn after a month of mailings at 20 a day, right? That's a couple hundred. And then you're not expending, investing thousands of dollars to learn about that county. So I completely, completely agree with you on that one. Um, gosh, some of the worst advice I've got just recently, this, um, that it has to be in, in markets where the land is 10 acres or greater. That is crazy to me. That's absolutely crazy to me. The, I mean, I bought quarter acre lots in counties over and over again. Um, two and a half acre, five acre parcels, all different sizes. It just is so dependent upon the county that you're in and the kind of land that is there. So I thought that was kind of odd advice when I saw that earlier this week. But, wow, interesting. So, yeah, just just... Make sure that the advice that you're taking, I guess uh, just some advice from all of us is that, that make sure the advice that you're taking is from people who are actually in the business and doing it every day and sharing the kind of deals that they're doing because they're in tune with the market and they know what's going on with the market, right? And um, can give you sound advice on this type of thing. Another reminder, today's podcast is... Uh, Sponsored by Flight School. If you want to learn more, go to the Land Geek, www.thelandgeek uh, slash training. Uh, and another thing, boot camp is in a month. I, oh, I think yeah. is, I'm so excited. I think it's like my 13th. I'm starting to lose track, but um, <laughs> I was having enough fingers. I, I know. I was actually watching a show yesterday. We meet, we read so many books about motivation that we share with each other. I watched the show. I need to find you the name that Bill Gates did. Um, it's a kind of documentary about him and he takes a think week every year. He goes off this dinky little cabin and just thinks and plans, thinks big picture about where he wants to go with his business or how to solve, um, it's, uh, Polio. He literally, I think there were 33 cases of polio in the world last year alone because he's solving it with his, um, the work that he's doing. And so that whole think week, it reminds me of boot camp. That's really my think week, right? I just do it four times a year and it's not a week That's where a I go plan. in, I get away from the rest of my world and I can come up with a plan high level on where I want to go with my business. So it's good enough for Bill Gates. It's good enough for us. I, I thought of one other uh, piece of advice that people often get uh, oh. that that I would just, uh, I, I guess, address real quickly. Mike and I talk to a lot of people on the phone, and uh, and I don't know why there's this uh, why there's this notion out there that you that you need to um, you know you need to get the toolkit first and then go to boot camp and then go to flight school, or you need to you know go through flight school first and then go to boot camp, or, you know, it's just kind of interesting. I think what I think what I would just recommend to people is that boot camp is for everyone, no matter where you are in your stage of land investing. And uh, for me, I think I've been to, you know, nine or 10. Now, every time I leave boot camp, I come away with something for my business. Uh, Mimi, you say this and Matt Forbes says this, it gives you what you need when you need it. So if you're a newbie, you're going to get the things you need. If you're, if you're uh, a year into this, you're going to get the things you need. And the, our coaching students definitely get the things they need in the VIP room. So, so uh, don't be afraid to come to boot camp. There's no right or wrong time. Well, there's no wrong time. It's always the right time, in my opinion. I, I agree, because a lot of times you hear things that you're not ready for yet. And it takes you to be farther down the road in your business for that. And it may be the second or time, third time you've seen it or heard it, but it strike, strikes you differently because you're now ready on your journey. Because we all have our different journeys, right? And building our own businesses. I completely right. agree with that. Well, Eric, do you want to talk about featured targeted lists? Oh, one? that was just... Uh... In, in reference to what Scott was talking about earlier, you know, he was talking about having to mail 
you know, maybe thousands of offers to a given county or something to determine, mm -hmm. um, you know, what the buy price is or if you can buy property there or whatever it is. Well, the reality is if you narrow down your list and target a certain area where you can determine the pricing very quickly with, you know, just like we were talking about, maybe a month worth of offers, maybe two weeks worth of offers. Um, you can get into that data and determine where you need to be. So um, yeah, I, I don't want to encourage anybody to send out thousands of offers, just blanket an area without really knowing what the market is and what you should be buying for. Completely agree. Sound advice there. All right. Well, anything else, guys? Who's got the tip of the week? Zeno? Oh, we tip of the week. Well, I got a quote that relates to what we're talking about, if that's all right. Fabulous. Sure. That's awesome. No quotes allowed. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. I just had it right here. Today's quote comes from, where'd it go? Oh, Henry David Thoreau. Ooh la la. Ooh. Says it's not enough to be busy. The question is, what are you, well, what are we busy about? And I think that relates because you're talking about, like Eric was talking about building websites. I mean, you can be awful busy in the beginning doing things that aren't going to move the needle. Um, and it's easy because you think, oh, I'm being very productive, but at what? It's something in the beginning, you just need to execute on the fundamentals. Get an area, get a list, scrub it, mail it. That's it. And all these other things that you can get really fancy over that aren't going to bring any, uh, you know, proof of concept. There it is to you, you know, just stay extremely focused. And so it's not enough to be busy. It's what, what are you busy on? That's a great quote. Thank you, Thoreau. <laughs> Good old Henry David. And I love quote tips of the week. That's awesome. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. So uh, we ask that uh, three favors of you guys. So uh, please subscribe, rate, and review, and send your screenshot to supportthelandgeek.com and get the new free wholesaling course on how to double your money in 30 days or less and the passive income launch kit. All right. Nice. Uh, do you guys want to do that for you? We have to. Yes, we have to. Tradition. Oh, oh yeah. You can make okay. it better than ever. One, <laughs> two, three. Let, let, let freedom, freedom. <laughs> That was pretty awesome, actually. Had a little like echo to it. Let, 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 let. Oh, you guys rock. I, I thought it was good. I thought it was good. Maybe you did an incredible job. Well, it's kind yeah. of surprise. Yeah, we, don't, we don't have any West Coasters on the call. We can't talk about what's for lunch. We've all had our lunch. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. We're rolling into evening. It's going to be happy yeah. hour in another hour right here. <laughs> it's always right. happy hour in Wisconsin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Beer and cheese. That's right. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, I bet. Huh. Mm -hmm. Thanks, well, Mimi, for filling in. That was uh, that was nice of you. I know you had a lot of prep time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <that's right. laughs> well, nothing like learning on the fly. That's right. <laughs> Trial that's by fire. Trial by fire. That's right. That's right. All right, sweet. I'm excited to see you guys in boot camp. Boot camp. Yeah, I am too. Should be fun. Likewise, it's going to be here before we know it. Yep, and I like that hotel. It's a nice hotel. Weather should be nice. Yeah. I think that time of year, isn't the, the heat break and it's going to be like cool No. Yeah. It used to be we would do uh, Scottsdale in August, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. This is typically Florida. So it should be nice. Right? Yeah. Be yeah. Nice. So this is a big change up. This is the first big change up, right? Was it Florida this time last year? Yeah. It's the first yeah. time we had yeah. been in Florida in the fall, I guess. Yeah. Now we just have to keep pushing to get the East Coast boot camp. We should take a vote now on whether or not it should go to Florida. There's four of us oh, here. Yeah. We, we should, should definitely <laughs> do that. Florida. Let's do it on the record. One, two, three. Who wants the East Coast boot camp? There we go. I'll do it. I, I mean, it's about the same one, one way or the other for me. So. There you go. I'm in. All well, the geeks agree. All right. We'll let Danielle know. <laughs> Look at that. Massive action. Gotta go. Gotta go. Let Danielle know. <laughs> 
I like this. I like this roundtable today. There's there's no meanness. You know, Mark's always picking on Scott. Scott's always picking on Mark. And yeah. Well, what are, you're, yeah. you're always like you're always the favored one. What what's the, what are you not like? <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. I just get I just get embarrassed. I can't say anything either. You guys are always nice to me too. But yeah, it's unanimous. East Coast boot camp. We just have to decide right. now if it's going to be Florida or Atlanta. Yeah. We'll do one in, one in both. We'll, we'll do one of each. Oh, that's an even better idea. There we idea. go. That's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, all the cats away. <laughs> Mark's calling us after this, I'm sure. Does that mean we have to take away Texas? I don't know how Danielle's going to feel about that. No, we don't want to take away Texas. Okay, Love. We don't want yeah, we can't take away Vegas. It's like only know. once a year we'll go to Scottsdale once a year. <laughs> yeah, that works. That's a plan. Not that exciting. We have to go there twice. Come on. Yeah. Once a year. <laughs> I think that's a great plan. Any other changes we want to make while it's just... Yeah, like while we're here, we'll have consensus. <laughs> while we're here. <laughs> <laughs> so it happens when you leave us in charge. That's right. Awesome. Well, it's nice talking with you guys. I hope you have a wonderful day. All right. Too, Mimi. Thanks. Thanks for filling in. Bye. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.